I am now recording. Hello, everybody. Woo! Welcome we to Game it. Dads. We're the daddiest gamey dads of all time. That's right. We are the daddiest gamers of all daddies. I don't Just know. call me daddy. Yeah. <clears throat> so, oh um, introductions. <laughs> I am Aaron, and this is my my partner in crime, Brett, and we are Game Cats. I am Brett, and I am his amigo. Yes, he is 100% my amigo. That is without question true. I don't even speak Spanish. I've been learning Spanish. I'm doing a little Duolingo's. Supposedly it's a very easy language to learn, but I'm a pretty dumb guy. So, <laughs> I I, I, hate, be- I hate the idea that Spanish is an easy language to learn because if it's if Spanish is easy, then like I don't want to try and learn any other language. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> Something about a, a, the biblioteca. Yes. It's the bathroom. Is that the bathroom or the library? That's the library. Don't ah, well. Esta, la biblioteca. Mi amo tipo en la jarraña discoteca. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, did you ever see Bedazzled with Brendan Fraser? No. <laughs> That's a scene. And <laughs> he makes a deal with the devil to, like, I don't know, he, he's trying to get the girl of his dreams and all that. Like, he's kind of a loser. And one of the, like, it's, it's like Monkey Paul situation, so he mm-hmm. wants to be, like, rich. So... She makes him a the the devil is obviously Elizabeth Hurley, obviously of course, of course. and uh, so he wants to be rich and famous or or rich rather. So she makes him a Colombia drug lord. Nice, <laughs> and he doesn't realize that he's speaking Spanish until he's speaking Spanish and he breaks out all the eighth grade Spanish that he knows. He's like, you know, something blah 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 biblioteca. You know, like I'm butchering the Spanish language. And I apologize. So I'm just a I'm a I'm a dumb American. Uh, I don't know any better. I except for Brenda Fraser. I am addicted to Community. I think it's one of the best TV shows that's ever been made. And there's a large part of it where they're supposed to be learning Spanish. So like randomly they will just like bust out some random Spanish. And there's a scene where they're where they have to like they're doing an assignment. And they have to, like, write, like, some, like, dialogue back and forth in Spanish. And then, like, um, Troy and Abed, at the, in the, like, post credit scene of every episode of Community, they just, like, bust out this, like, all-in-Spanish rap. But it's, like, it's, like, a rap of a person who, like, knows, like, five words in Spanish and just, like, strung them all together in a sentence. <laughs> and it's... <laughs> it's <laughs> It, like if you like look at the translations of what they're saying, it's like, I like ice cream. That's a dog. I'm going to, I'm going to the library. Like it's just like, but the way it sounds because it's all in Spanish, it just like, it sounds like he's really rapping, but he's not saying anything. Oh man, I gotta I gotta bring up Scrubs for just a second. You know we're talking about. Spanish and all that stuff, but we got to talk about about the Mexican apple thief. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to talk about the Mexican apple thief, but just <laughs> oh my god, J- JD dressed up in a, in a poncho, <laughs> sombrero. He's like, why do they use me in their foreplay? <laughs> it's such a weird, like that was like the thing that I loved about Community, not the Mexican apple thief, but just the, that concept. It's very, they were very, very good at, like, making each character have, like, weird stuff, but it's very specific to them. Like, Elliot's family had an apple orchard, so that's why the this apple thief is, is in her sex play, and it's, like, that's very, very specific, but it's so random. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well... I told you before we started recording that I've got a new segment, and I'm going to break it out real quick. Go for it. Just to kind of bring it back around to gaming and all that stuff. This segment is called Brett's Bothered. Mm, I got one to, I got an Aaron's Bothered right after this. Do you? Okay. 
So, Brett's bothered. Um, I don't listen to a lot of podcasts um, anymore, but the podcasts that I do listen to, it seems like they're all kind of like bouncing back the same ideas back and forth, which is kind of crazy. Um, they claim not to listen to each other, but they all kind of sound exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of tired of how everything has devolved from we we all kind of come together for the love of video games. Um, that's what a lot of these podcasts are, and you know, and some of them some of them don't do it as much, but um, we've become kind of a business analytics uh, medium, kind of. Like, nobody really gives a crap about the games anymore. Uh, at least it, that's kind of what it seems. Um, case in point, the ABK acquisition with Microsoft. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think Xbox had a pretty great year last year. Um, Hi-Fi Rush, all this other good stuff. Um you know, they, you know, Redfall is what it is and all that stuff, but people would much rather talk about, you know, the acquisitions or how many copies this sold or how many people played this or how many people played that versus, like, how exactly, like, how good Hi-Fi Rush was. Um, and that's just that's just a very small example. Um, I, I know we've kind of talked a little bit about, like, how we want this show to go and, and all that stuff, and I love... So far, this is, I, I'm going to break out my positive right here at the beginning and stuff, but I love that we can set ourselves apart from the stuff like that and talk about how much we love video games. Uh, we're going to get into that a lot in this in this episode. Uh, Aaron and I are both all over the place with whatever, with all the stuff that we're playing, and we both love the things that we play, you know, for better or worse in some cases, but we talk about the video games themselves. Um, there might be times where we have to talk about something or other that involves the business of it or business side of it. But man. Yeah. Chill out. Yeah. Chill I, out. I a hundred percent agree with you. And I feel like, like I kind of, I, I've gotten to the point where I kind of just steer clear of basically opinion podcasty type things that are just like, like, I don't know. I guess speculation. I don't like the idea of someone who has not played a game talking about how much someone is going to like it based off of how many pre-orders or how many, you know, like, like, oh, well, this studio, and I'm like, like, guys, I get it, but, like, play the game before you form an opinion about it. Like, if like who cares that Final Fantasy sixteen sold, you know, three million copies? Was it a good game? Yeah. Hell yeah, it was. Like, play that... The- <laughs> Like play the game, please. Just I I don't want I don't need your like opinion based on what you could research on the Google Analytics and you went to Google Analytics and you saw how many times this specific game was referenced in the past six like I don't I don't care, yeah. man. I don't care. Just, yeah. Well, did you play it? Did you like people, it? Are these people really qualified to talk about the business side of things? Or are they just regurgitating the things that they read on the internet? Like that's that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, that's a rhetorical question. All that stuff we we can all kind of come to that conclusion. Um, but yeah. Um, that being said, let's hear what you're bothered about. <laughs> all right. Okay. So I had an interesting set of circumstances happen to me recently that have led to this conclusion. So I gotta start at the beginning. So, um, Tales of Arise, the new DLC came out. Mm-hmm. So I was like, new DLC for Tales of Arise. I love that game. I'm going to pick that up. And that's what I'm going to play next to Bloodborne during January. So I picked up the DLC, booted my game up. For some reason, my PS5 did not have my sale file, save file for Tales of Arise. Like, Tales of, Tales of Arise was like the first PS5 game I played on my PS5 when I bought it. But for some reason, my save wasn't there. Started up the DLC, and it like threw me generically into the game with like generic skills equipped and no items and like i was like no i can't do this i did you play it on ps4 no it was the first ps5 game i played like i only ever played it on ps5 i don't know what happened 
So, uh, you know me, I creep trophies and all that stuff. I was looking at your trophies, and I saw that you had put a ton of time into it, but, like, you hadn't earned any trophies on the PS5 version of it. Like, I like I said, I only played it on PS5. Like, I, it was the first game I bought when I bought my PS5. Right, but did you play the PS4 version on PS5? Maybe I did. I don't know. That's possible, but... <clears throat> I, I, I'm I want, assuming I was playing the PS5 version. Maybe that's what happened. That's possible. <clears throat> so that happened. So then I was like, okay, well, I love, I like this game. So I have no problem just like starting a new file and I'll just play all the way through and then jump right into the DLC after I finish it. So started a new file, started playing and you know, I'm enjoying myself. I, I was going to, I was like, if I'm going to do this again, I'm going to play a little bit more like little more brett style i want to go for like try and get everything so i'm like super powerful when i get to the dlc so i can like you know have fun and just like run around and do whatever the heck i want like i, I don't want to be grinding in the dlc so i that led me to picking up going online and looking at i don't know if you played tales of arise but like titles oh, yeah. is how you grind your characters and like they're how you get different abilities you have to get certain titles to get the abilities so then i found out that there are three titles for every character that are in DLC packs. So, off the top, this already angers me. <laughs> there are moves in the game that are paywalled. I'm upset. So or then, Summer all over again. So... Uh, so <laughs> Then I am like, okay, well, I have, I have given this game an award in a Bretley's. I obviously like it. Let's check these DLCs. And let's see how much money they're asking for, for what I get. So I go into the DLC list. And I'm like, is there a bundle where I can just get all the DLCs that have abilities with them in like one shot? No. I'm annoyed again, but let's keep going. So, I scrolled through all the DLCs, and there are some gross ones in Tales of Arise. Like, gain five levels, and like, here's all the monies. Like, I was like... Yeah. Ugh, this is, that's bad. Anyways, I'm just gonna ignore it. And then there are some that I was like... It's like, okay, that's cool. I like... The, I mean, I, I don't want to pay for it, but I like the costume... Then I get to the DLCs that I need to get these uh, get these abilities. Each of them are five dollars, so that's fifteen dollars that I have to spend on costumes. You, you know what I'm going to say, right? Go ahead and say it because it's, it's it get worse after that. So go ahead and say whatever you're going to say. <laughs> fifteen bucks, little man. Put that, that shit, shit in my hand. If that and money, if that money doesn't show. Then you owe me, owe me, owe. My jungle love. Oh, we, yo, we, yo. I think I want to know you, know you, know you, know you. Yeah, what? <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're millennials. Deal with it. <laughs> Continue. Okay, so. That was I'm, really like, cute. <laughs> I'm like, here are the, the DLCs. One, two, and three. And then I'm like. Wait, why are there only three characters in these DLCs? Each of the DLCs is split into two, where you get three characters in each DLC. So instead of being $15, it's $30 to get all of them. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not okay. I'm like, Tales of Arise, you mother... Like... Fifteen dollars is yeah. too much, but as much as I've enjoyed that game, and I like just for the fact, like I want to have everything, I want to have all the skills, and like I want to go in and kick everybody's butt. I'm like almost, but then thirty dollars you have to pay thirty dollars to get all of the abilities for all of the characters, and it's thirty dollars. That's yeah, like. Dude, yeah. DLC is out of control. That's so crazy. That's nuts to me. And like, 
the the new DLC for Tales of Arise itself, the new one that just came out, that was like grinding to get through, is thirty dollars. So, in other words, to get every skill in the game, you have to pay an additional sixty dollars on top of the sixty dollars you pay for the game. So, in Nuts. in Brett's mind, this is. I, I see DLC in some cases, and I I do the ostrich thing. I'll put my head in the sand. Um, I'm not a big DLC guy. Uh, that I, I just I just don't do it. And in most cases, like if it's a story expansion, I might do it if I really like the game. But I don't like the idea of having to pay for additional stuff. Um, you know, my you know I'm a big wrestling fan, and my the wrestling games that I play, in some cases, they will uh, hold out wrestlers that are obviously on the roster, have been on the roster for a little while for DLC, and those are typically about 15, 20 bucks um, in a pack or whatever. And it's usually one wrestler that I like and like four wrestlers I don't. Um, or you can pay for like the, the season pass type stuff, like, which is like 30 to 40 bucks. Like if they had given me a season pass option, if I could like buy the Tales of Arise season pass and get, like, all of the the costumes and all of that stuff and pay $30 for it? Like, maybe. Maybe. But, like, there's still stuff in that place that, like, you still have to pay for. Like, there are, like, other costume DLC that don't have abilities with them that are in there. Like, bundle this shit up at the very, very, very least. The, Some companies are, are are worse about it than others. I just I there there's my I I'm like I was like as soon as I saw <laughs> as soon as I saw this this happened today as soon as I saw it I was like I'm gonna talk about this on a freaking podcast as soon as we get as soon as I get a mic in front of me I'm gonna talk about this because fucking bullshit. <laughs> you wanna talk about some happy stuff? Yeah yeah let's let's move on from from this one because that was that's really frustrating. <laughs> So, um, my, like, we're talking about what we're playing and all that stuff. It kind of ties into some of my, some of my actual, like, topics and all that stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm kind of going, I'm in, I'm in backlog mode a little bit, or at the very, like, and that's probably just, that's probably really reductive, but, um, I'm going back and playing a lot of the, a, a lot of older games. Um, I bought... So, dude, okay, so I've already finished six games this year. Like, finish, like, start to finish, like, I finished six games this year. That's um, impressive. Which is awesome, because I don't have, like, hardly any time to do anything anymore. Like, work's been crazy, uh, so I've been doing a lot of gaming in the morning. Um, what are the, I actually played the Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so I, I don't, like, ever play the Switch, but I borrowed Ali Switch to play Super Mario RPG, so I did that, so I've been gaming on my lunch break a little bit. Um... But, like, the game I'm playing right now, I'm playing Knights of the Old Republic for the Xbox. But um, I actually, what drove me to kind of go backwards was, because uh, I've been, you know, going back and getting, I got the, the Platinum Trophy in The Last of Us Part Two. I got the Platinum Trophy in uh, Stray. Um, I got the Platinum in uh, the Callisto Protocol. So, like, you know, pretty recent games. Mm-hmm. But I bought uh, the Avatar... Um, Frontiers of Pandora game. And mm-hmm. I'm not a big Avatar guy. Um, I don't think but anyone like, you know technically counts as a big Avatar guy. No, no. And like, dude, I've never heard anybody talk about Avatar before, except for my buddy Joe. Like, he's like, you know, he he brought me over to his house specifically to watch that movie, and it was three hours of my life I'll never get back. <laughs> like, dude, it's not, a, it's not, they're, it's not a bad movie. Like, they're they're not bad movies. They're just very, 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 very unforgettable. Like. Not unforgettable. They're they're so forgettable it's unforgettable. <laughs> Does that make sense? I get what you're saying. But so I bought this game and I'm I'm old. You know, I'm gonna be thirty nine this year. Like, you know, my my skills are still really sharp. I play a lot of Mega Man games, play a lot of Castlevania, um, you know, like like skill based games. Um, my eyes though. I'll tell you what, this game is so damn pretty, I can't play it. I can't play it. I can't see anything because it's too pretty. I, I get it. I get it. 
I, I, I don't. I, I don't know what's a mission. I don't know. I, I can't tell, like, the, the pickable flowers from the trees. Um, all the people are blue. <laughs> that's, that's very true. It's it's first person. Like, it, it, it is a Far Cry game. I love Far Cry. Um, I don't play a lot of shooters anymore, but I love Far Cry. But, and this is, I, I guess, kind of a, like a, like a sub- Brett's bothered a little bit, but uh, let me tell you my my I don't know, just my my absolute frustration with PlayStation versus Xbox. Okay, okay. So I play I play primarily on PlayStation. I have my Xbox as well. I love my Xbox, but I play primarily on PlayStation. I'm gonna give you two examples here. One is Starfield. It's a game from a from a company that I love. I love Bethesda. Uh, I bought the game. I played it for four to five hours. That game was not for me, right? Mm-hmm. Avatar. It's from Ubisoft. I love Ubisoft open world games. I played it for about four to five hours. The game is not for me. On Xbox, I get on their website. I go through the customer service area. I click on I would like a refund. It asks me like why I would like it. I click on I don't want. It's just I don't like the game. And within twenty minutes, I have my money back. On PlayStation, as soon as you download it and and put it on your console, it's your it's yours forever. Yeah. Like there's no there there there's no refund policy with it. Yeah, that's. I don't, I Sony's don't Sony's store, the PlayStation Store, has always been. Like a, it's always felt like, I don't even know like how to explain it. It always, it always felt like it was like against you. Like it's, yeah. it's trying to, it's trying to get your money and like, it's trying to trick you. And like uh, uh, the PlayStation store never felt very customer friendly. Well, a lot of that's on me. You know what I mean? I did my research with it. It looked fun. It did the same thing with Starfield. You know, like those games are. I typically like that, like these types of games. So I figured, you know what, I'm gonna give it a shot. Why is a P, dude? Like that was just a great experience. Like, um, you know, I, I I jumped in. It was a it was not a brand new experience for me, but like it's not what I would typically play because I'm not really a Souls guy. And I can't wait to talk to you about your stuff, by the way. <laughs> um, oh, dude, I can't wait. But you know, why is a P was such a great experience for me? It's like you know what, I'm gonna branch out. So I did, and like Avatar, like I think it's it's fundamentally a great game. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of people are compi- comparing it to Crisis from back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Crisis, Crisis with a Y, because mm-hmm. of course it is. Of course, um, you know, it's it's a graphical powerhouse. Um, I think the gameplay is there. Um, it's it's a lot of it's Ubisoft checklist, you know, and and sometimes those games are great, but in this case, dude, I just I can't get into it. But I, I, I know I'm kind of all over the place with this. Um, I didn't have a, like a formatted topic or formatted topic or anything like that. But I'm like, I've went back a couple generations. Like, so I'm playing Knights of the Old Republic. And I'll tell you what, dude, uh, there's something just immensely special about that game. Like, there's, you can see the, the DNA of Bio, or uh, not Bioshock. Um, the DNA of Mass Effect in it. Ah, mm-hmm. um, oh, dude, I'm just, I love it so much. You really enjoying it? Oh, dude, it's like sometimes going back. And you know, we both got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on the on the horizon here. That so we're T minus almost a month. So fired up. Um, so fired up, dude. So like right now is the best time to kind of go back and play some of these older games. You know, check out. I, I never beat Nice Little uh, Nice Little Republic. Never did. It, never beat it. But I'm in. I'm in clear out the backlog type mode, and I don't. I don't like backlogs. I don't like. I don't like that stuff. I mean, if if it tickles your fancy in that moment, do flip and play it. You know, and for on, on this day. It's scratching an itch. Yeah. And I'm digging it. Yeah. I'm like, <clears throat> like, I put, I put Bloodborne, like, front and center on my list right now. <laughs> and, like, 
I'm playing it. <laughs> I'm playing it. And then, like, Tales of Arise is, like, the cooldown. Because I'm, like, I'm so focused. I'm so in the zone when I'm playing Bloodborne that, like, I need to, like, after I, like, finish a beat a boss or get to a new lantern i'm like okay I need to like <sighs> dude so tales I... of arise and bloodborne at the same time that's like you having chocolate ice cream with like tabasco sauce <laughs> like <laughs> it's 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 perfect for me because like i'm yeah. like i play bloodborne and then like all right i need to cool down so i'm gonna run around and look for some yeah. look for some hoodles and find some and put on some cat ears on my character, <laughs> do some goofy stuff. So oh, dude, I love it. So let me let me with that, let me jump into my Bloodborne experience so far. So <clears throat> the way, you know, I pretty much have to play games at this point cuz I don't really get time to just like sit down and play is I've been playing it on my lunch break from work. So like I'll be working and then 1 o'clock rolls around, I'll hop up go in the living room, turn on some Bloodborne, and I'll sit down and play. So, I, it took me forever to finally get to the freaking, the, the Cleric Beast, which I found out later is an optional boss, but I still, it was worth it to fight it. So, the weirdest thing about it is, and this, this is the same problem I had in uh, Cuphead, Getting, I have so, I have so much of an easier time fighting the bosses than I do traversing the levels. Like, I have can't tell you how many times that I would run into bad guys that I killed a hundred times that would just randomly kill me in the random opportunity they get, and then I went into the cleric beast. I fought the cleric beast three times and I killed him. And then I went to Father, I'm not even going to say it, Father Gaston. I'm going to turn you into a Beauty and the Beast character. And I, I think I fought him, <laughs> I think I fought him, I fought him like five times and then I was like, okay, I need to upgrade my my saw before I go back and fight him again. So I... You're using the saw blade. Yeah. I think it's cool. It just it's cool. Looking. Interesting, interesting. So I upgraded my saw, and then I went back and I fought him like two more times. And like the second time, I beat him, and I wasn't anywhere close to dying. Like I have not had a lot of trouble with the bosses so far. It's just traversing the areas, and I like that first area. I was I was in that first area before I actually fought the cleric beast and beat him for almost a week so like probably like six hours and then like i went and fought the cleric beast and beat him in two tries so like <clears throat> and like andrea is sitting next to me the whole time because she's super into it but all she does is go did you touch that? Did you touch that? What about that box over there? Go go break that box. Go break that box. Go break that box. There's a box over there. Go get it. Like, look at that door. Go talk to... Go click on that door. Is someone in that door? Like... like boo. I have... I have to try not to die. I will worry about touching everything once all the bad guys are dead. <laughs> She's like, no, you're going to walk away from that box and you're going to forget it. I'm like, Fine. Chop, there's nothing in the box. <laughs> like, <laughs> she is she is super into it, and, like, here's what's going on, and that's why I keep saying you have to come and tell, explain Bloodborne, because she keeps going, like, but what's going on? What's happening? I'm like, boo, I'm not skipping any story. Like, this is just how these games work. They don't lay it all out for you. You have to, like, dig and dig and, like, read descriptions of items and, you know, like, have conversations with people and then go back to have some conversations with you. Yeah, talk to the freaking doll lady a hundred times and she'll give you five details that you have to string together. Like, this is how these games work. It's not, there's no point where someone is going to say, like, welcome to Bloodborne. You're here because of blah, blah, and blah, 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 and blah, and your objective is to blah, blah, and blah. Like, no one's going to do that. 
<laughs> but she's okay. Like, so I wanted to propose this on the podcast. I was going to text you the other day about it because you asked me to get, to come over and uh, explain Bloodborne and stuff, dude. We need to make that. A, we need to make that content. Okay. Make it a video. Or or whatever, you know what I mean. I'll do my hair. Yeah, I, uh, and, uh, I randomly butting in here. I actually just I set the latest uh, podcast episode, the Brettleys, to actually go up on my YouTube channel too. So now oh. they go up on YouTube. It's just like a little like like a little screen with like a screensaver looking thing that just says you know Game Dads on it, but it, like the whole audio plays so. Now you can go okay. to my YouTube channel and watch it if you're feeling it. Maybe down the line we'll do cameras and all that stuff. Um, you know, yeah, it'd be, it'd be kind of cool. It'd be get it give me like I'm watching Star Wars right now. Um, <laughs> sometimes I play video games and stuff, but I I, I wear pants, so like I, I'm not like Winnie the Pooh in it over here or anything like that. So yeah. we may as well uh, may as well do something with that down the line, but we'll see. But yeah, dude, um, I love that you're playing Bloodborne. Um, it's aggressive, and it's wet, yes. and it's nasty, yes. and everything hates you. Everything hates you. Um, <laughs> and Tria gets did, mad did, did, when I go to a door. She's like, look, there's a door. They go up to the door and talk to someone. I'm like, so that they can be like, ha ha, fuck you, and then laugh. And she's like, no, you can't all do that. And every door that we talk, walked up to where someone talked to us, they've basically been like, F you, and left. Yeah. Every once in a while, you might come across one where you need to bring them an item or, or something like that, or you need to go do something for them. Um, yeah. But, I talked to a yeah, little girl like, whose who's mom wears a brooch, and she gave me a music box. Oh, yeah. Did you use that on Father uh, Gaston? No. <laughs> Was I supposed to? You can. What does it do? <laughs> it, um, it's been a while since I played it, but he has two forms. Uh-huh. And it gets, him, it gets him to, like, calm down. Because he's, he's, like, possessed by something or whatever. Uh, it's, it's been a while since I played it, but and that's, I guess, spoilers from Bloodborne. Shut up. Um, it's a 10-year-old game. Oh, oh that that makes kiss, so much more sense. Butt. Yeah, um, but yeah, there's all, but like the game gives you zero context for any of these things, and you kind of just have to like figure it out. Um, like, there's a couple bosses that hate fire, and you've got these like um, like the fire paper or whatever that you can spread on your weapon and make your a, your weapon is just imbued with fire. Yeah, I I ran that gauntlet a little bit. I uh because when I was fighting him, what I noticed was there's like when I was going up the bridge towards where the cleric beast was, there were these like I don't know what you call them, these like friggin' wolf things, and I just like for some reason had Molotovs equipped, so I threw one and it, it took a whole bunch of damage from it. So I was like, oh sweet, maybe that's a thing. Maybe like like hairy monsters. You know, take damage when you throw Molotovs at him, and then like I tried it on the, the cleric beast, and he was like, "Shut up, you're stupid." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, <laughs> guess I'm done yeah. with this forever." <laughs> you'll you'll get it, dude. Um, I have a hard time playing Souls games and other things at the same time um, because, like, I have to focus like just on that. It's kind of like with Lies of P. That's all I did for like a month. Like, if I had free gaming time, like, that's what I did. Um, you know, I guess aside from maybe Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Yeah, you were but... hardcore in the Chippendale Rescue Rangers for a bit. <laughs> but we, we don't talk about Chippendale Rescue Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Fat Cat had to die. <laughs> no, but as far as, as, far as Bloodborne is concerned... I am, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm taking it slow. Cool. I'm not, like, because, like, like I said, when I'm playing Budborn, I am 100% focused. Like, fully focused. I'm like, I can't, like, with, like, 
Dom on this side screaming and Lee on this side screaming and Andrea telling me to destroy every box, like, I have to, like, zone them out and focus. And I can only stay in that state for so long. So, like, like we were play I was playing on Friday. And Andrea's like, why do you keep quitting? Like, I want to see more. And I'm like, I cannot stay this focused for this long. I have been three hours just staring at this screen as intensely as I possibly can so I don't miss anything coming out of from behind me to try to kill me. Like, I can't do this all night. Like, I can't. Are you running a build? No. Did you look up anything for that? No, I, I went in coldest turkey. I just, I saw the, the saw thing. I was like, this looks cool. And I, like, this is my weapon. I was using the blunderbuss until I realized that, like, there's... A, a stat that tells how much damage it does and that stat I currently have at 7 and it sucks and it does not do damage the okay so guns don't do what you think they that they do they're more for just like stunning enemies um you, there's no there's no like block button mm -hmm. in it um that's kind of what you're you're using that more as a defense mechanism, not a not offense. I kind of caught that. Like I kind of caught that. Like the, the what it, what is what the blunderbuss has been best for while I've been playing is like if there are like a bunch of enemies running at me, I can like hit them with the blunderbuss and that stops them. And then after that, I can follow up and attack before they can recover. But like I was using it, I've been using it that way. But like hitting them with this and like I don't know if it's just I'm not good enough yet I haven't gotten good enough but like trying to aim that blunderbuss when you like need it to hit is like 80% of the time I'm not gonna hit the person I'm trying to hit and it ends up with me getting hit so I'm just like fuck it I'll just wait till they I go yeah there you go uh, I, I very rarely use the gun in that game um, I've just from the days of Secret of Mana, I've I've always been the guy that hits the hits the thing with the stick, hit the thing with the stick until it dies, and uh, I, I I love the Hunter's Axe in that game. Uh, it's got range. Um, I had the same sort of idea with Lies of P when I played that. There's a like a scythe or whatever that almost mm -hmm. kind of turns into a whip, which is pretty badass. Um, but in, in my brain of brains up here, I have to kind of like link these things to things that I already love. And I think of, I think of Bloodborne more as a Castlevania game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's kind of how I play it is like, I'll, especially like, you know, something like Symphony of the Night or Aria of Sorrow or, or like one of those other, like, like the RPG style of Castlevanias where you're kind of going from one save point to the next. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of how the how the lanterns are in those games, um, where I'll I'll go like I'm just I'm I'm my focus is from this to this, and then once I get to where I'm going, then I can go back and kind of explore the in betweens. So um, yeah, that was that was kind of how I how I've been treating it so far. Like like my goal is to get to the next lantern, and I like like. Like I keep saying, like Andrea's like you're, you're like, that guy. That guy dropped something. You're here. I'm like, let me just get to the next lantern, and then once I get there, we can turn around and go back and get all that stuff. But like right now, like like I keep I gotta keep going forward. I can't just stop and piddle around at every every spot in the game. That's just not my brain is not wired that way. I can't just like kill two guys and then like I'm gonna pop a squat and like pull out a textbook and read about what's going like i need to like keep going forward yeah you can't pause um and running is an option too yeah if you I, need I, to just fall ass and get out of there dude run, those guys will only follow you so far yeah i it, it it took me a while to learn that i could run i i literally did not know did not like I fought the cleric beast, and I did not know that there was an actual run in the game. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I, I like. There's a jump too. There's a jump. You can jump. How do you, you have jump? To, you have to be. 
you have to be running. I think you may, I think you may click on the left stick. It's been a while since I played, um, but uh, Liza P kind of has the same thing where you you run with like the circle button or whatever, then you click in the left stick, and then he'll do kind of like a like a Mario sixty four style like long jump or whatever. But it's a good way to get be like it's good. It's a good way to kind of close distance or like get out of the way of something. Yeah, like that was the the trick that I figured out to beat Father Gaston after I finally and Bloodborne My fans are going to murder me for that. But yeah. <clears throat> how I figured out how to beat him was I kept, like, when he gets into his second form and he just, like, swings at you like crazy, my, my immediate thought is, okay, dodge roll until he's done swinging. But, like, the dodge roll has, like, a recovery that, like, he was getting in between. Like, he was, his follow-up hits were hitting me because I was still on the ground finishing my roll while he was swinging and then i was like okay well if i don't roll and i just run away from him when he starts swinging at me i could probably get more distance and then once he's finally done then i can start attacking again and that's exactly what happened and like once i figured that part out i was like oh, okay get out of here you're now you're not hitting me every five seconds you're i'm fine get out of here you're dead i can't wait for you to keep, for you to play some more of it dude but um yeah, it almost makes me want to go back and play uh, Elden Ring. Like, yeah, and Andrea is already talking about Elden Ring. I'm like, oh, uh, okay, girl. I when I finish this game, when this is done, I am going to, I'm going to take an equal break to the break I'm taking from freaking Persona Five before I pick up anything like this again. And it probably won't be. It probably won't be Elden Ring. It'll probably be like Neo or something. Ooh, Neo is hard. <laughs> like in the grand scheme of like Souls and Soul style games, like it's a whole genre now. Apparently, um, why? Or uh, Neo is like, oh, uh, dude, Neo is brutal. Um, it's up there with like, uh, it's like, it's like. I think Neo is probably the hardest one. Uh, Sekiro is 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 pretty hard as well. Um. I think people tell me how hard Bloodborne is, but like I, I found Bloodborne easy comparatively to like uh, I, I, I played Demon Souls when it came out. Like I, I follow that one pretty pretty closely, um, and I played most of the Dark Souls. I think I played one and two. I didn't play three, um, and then Elden Ring. I like I find Bloodborne actually more my style of game. Because it's more like speed base as opposed to like hunker down, parry with your shield and all that other stuff. Yeah, um, the thing that I the thing that like kind of changed my perspective on Bloodborne because I kind of was just like, this is going to be an absolutely difficult slog and I'm going to hate it the whole time. The thing that like changed my opinion was like once I got in and like like the first that first six hours I was like. I don't know if I'm going to finish this. I don't know if I'm going to finish this. And then, like, I fought the Cleric Beast, and then, like, I, like, just, you know, randomly running into him. Like, I didn't, I, I don't, I haven't been looking at maps or walkthroughs or guides. I just was running, and then, like, I got past the part on the bridge, and then, boom, there he was. And I was like, oh, hey, this is the boss. And then I started fighting him, and I was like, if I had another round to figure out this guy's moves, I think I could beat him. And then, like, I died and I needed to stock up more blood vials before I went back. So I was, I went back to the Hunter's Dream because I had money and I was just going to buy him. And then, like, the girl's like, hey, do you want to level up? And I was like, there's level ups in this game? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, let's level up. And then I leveled up and I was like, get out of here, you... You freaking cleric beast! Shut up. Get out of my face! And then he was dead. I was like, "Yes, okay." And then the game was like, "You know what would be really interesting? You know how you were really excited because like you you saw the way to go and you felt like you were on this like semi linear path. What if I just put a gate in front of you that just doesn't open? How's that feel?" And I was like, "Okay, so this gate just doesn't open," and it's like. Nope. And I was like, okay, well, now I really am lost. 
So I'm going to go and like look it up. And I looked it up in a very specific, specific way that like specifically led me astray. It was like, you can buy an item for like 10,000 blood echoes to open this gate. And I was like, so I just got to grind for 10,000 blood echoes. And as I was like running around doing this grinding, I actually found the path to actually take me to the next area to actually run into. I'm gonna stop saying his name because Bloodborne people are gonna freak out. So keep calling him Father Gaston. Who cares? Come at us. So, my <laughs> I did. A, I did like some random grinding, and I was like running all over the place in this other in this other area, and then I ran into him, fought him, I lost. <clears throat> but when I was, like, making my way back, I was like, there's this little path over here to the other side that I didn't take. So let me go over there. And I went over, and then there's, like, the elevator that takes you right back to, like, the central Yarnum gate. And I was like, okay, game. You're right. I expected something. You didn't tell me or hint to me that this was how it was going to be. I just, that was how I expected it to be. You're not wrong for that. I was wrong for making expectation of how you should act. This is perfectly fine. This is very logical. This is very, you know, like, gameplay, gamer-focused. Like, I just was not exploring everything like I should. So that's my fault, not yours. So then I was back on the game side. Yeah. Because, like... That's what I love most about it, dude. It, like, it... I don't know, it, it, it takes kind of an old school mentality where it kind of puts, it, it makes you think, but it's fair. You know what I mean? Like, it, you have to use your brain a little bit when you're playing Bloodborne. Um, we're all kind of used to, you know, years of being, uh, you know, having our hands held, you yeah. know, through you know, our Ubisoft games. And um, even, you know, I'd say like, you know, like, Modern Zelda games kind of do that a little bit. Like they've kind of got away from it a little bit with Breath of the Wild and all that. But um, you know, there's a there's a little dot on your map, and that's where you're supposed to go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, Bloodborne just kind of sticks in the area and just says, "Figure it out." Figure it out, and like take the time. Every time you take a step, every time you take a turn, like remember which way you turned, which way you went. Yep. So that you can get back because there's no map yep. and no one's going to guide you. No, there's not going to be a, a street sign that says this way back to central Garnum. You just have to figure it out. Like, so like, like I, like I was saying, like, that's exactly what happened. I was like, I don't want to run through these freaking sewers again. It was getting on my nerves the first time. I don't want to have to do it again. And then like, I took one left and like, now I don't have to go through that sewer because I found the elevator that takes me right there. And then now that I've beaten in, I'm past that part. I'm in a new area that I have no idea where I'm going, but it's like the game, <clears throat> the game is smart enough to link the places that you need to go together, but you have to be willing to take that left, even though the, you know, the giant steps that the giant just rolled the giant burning meteor down is tempting, but if you take that left, that takes you, makes a shortcut for you right back to the last freaking lantern that you were just at that, like, saves you time. And then the bad guys that you meet between there are, like, blood vial sponges and you can just beat them over and over again to restock your blood vials. The game does everything for you. You just have to know where to look and you have to be willing to explore. <clears throat> yep. You gotta put the time in, put, you know, put the effort in. I love it, dude. I'm so glad you're playing it. But like I said, how's it running on your PS5? What's up? How's it run? How's it running on your PS5? Like, does it? I have not had any issues, any hiccups, nothing. <clears throat> hmm. I'm just curious. Excuse me for one second. I'm uh... I cough my face off. <coughs> <coughs> ah. I'm tired, dude. Did that mute properly? Um, yeah. Did you hear me cough? No, I didn't hear you cough. Oh. I no. Oh, cool. I'm uh I got my, my mic all hooked up. 
I'm like, I'm, I used the mute button on the back of my mic instead of like going into the settings to turn it off because I didn't want to mess with anything. But I didn't know if it was oh, cool. properly. <clears throat> no. Okay, no. So I, I, I sent you some text the other day about um, Drake and the Super Nintendo. Or the, oh gosh, why did I say Super Nintendo? Sega Genesis. Uh huh. Um, I got to tell you, dude, just real quick. Watching my son figure out a tube television, a VCR, and a just a regular ass Sega Genesis with you know cartridges and cords and cables and all this other stuff was just adorable, flat out adorable. Um, I bought Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters two on VHS from Treasure Mart like seven years ago. Heck yeah! Um, I've just I've just never, I, I've never, I've never like popped the tapes in or anything like that. Just, I, they've always been kind of just a thing on my shelf. And, uh, so we popped these, I got this, uh, TV VCR, uh, combo or whatever. Um, when we were remodeling our, uh, our office, we got rid of the stuff that was in the break room and I just, they let me have the televisions that was in there. So, um, it's been sitting in my garage for a little while and, I started buying for the Sega Genesis and I was like, you know what, let's go and hook all this stuff up. So, um, we popped that tape in just cause I wanted to see if the tape worked. And, uh, the first thing we had to do was rewind the tape because they didn't, they weren't kind. They didn't rewind. They did not. They were um, not. But watching Drake, like, cause we had to wait a few minutes for it to rewind and all that stuff. Just, <laughs> His expression was absolutely priceless. But dude, we had so much fun playing that thing. And uh, he, pretty much the entire week, dude, every day after school, he would go and he'd pull up a chair and he'd sit in front of the Sega. And uh, you know, we've got, I've only got a few games for it. We've got like Sonic 2 and Jurassic Park and The Lion King and all that stuff. But um, he would go in there and, and pop up on Sonic and veg out for a little bit, just kick it like it's, you know, 1994. And uh, it was just, just uh, there was a little side note that I wanted to bring up on the pod, and uh, you know, it, it was it was very wholesome this week. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's it's crazy to think like this thing that was like a normal part of our lives is so far removed that it's like now it's like he got the tape and then he rewound it and he was like, "What is this thing that's happening right now?" Like. I like this was that was so much of our daily lives to like oh. to, when Dom sees a videotape for the first time it's it's gonna blow her mind. <clears throat> oh, dude, the quality is so bad. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> dude, we, we popped it on and it's got like uh, do you remember like the the static? It would pop up in like two sections, like the top and the bottom. Yep. Oh, yeah. And like a, a little ring of static there, and then it's like, <laughs> it's it's four by three aspect ratio, so it would like zoom in real close on the... So like we're, we're used to watching Ghostbusters and you know, with 4K widescreen and stuff. It's a movie from 1984, but like, you know, with all the, the modern hardware we have, like we, you know, it's, we stream it on the Apple TV or we've got the Blu-ray or whatever. And uh, you, you can see everything that's going on, on the screen and stuff, but he is just, it's so bad, but it's so like, I don't know, simpler times, dude. I, I don't know. Like, it's It just sent me back in time a little bit. It's like, someone was explaining this, like, this is one of those things that I find really interesting, but like, someone was explaining it the other day online, and like... <clears throat> No matter how much of the fancy, like, upscaling and, you know, HDifying and 4King we do to some of these classic movies, like, the way that they were explaining it was, like, directors, when they were shooting these movies, shot them with the idea that that grainy, like, low-res, like... 4-3 aspect ratio, that was how people were going to see it, so the movies are shot that way. They're not shot for, like, you know, like these massive TVs and these huge aspect ratios and be able to see every pixel on every person's face. Like, they're not, 
shot that way. So it's actually like there's actually a physical difference in the movie if you're watching it in the aspect ratio it was meant to be seen in. Yeah. Like some of the stuff that like we will look at now and we're like, man, look at these graphics. Look at the CG. But like if you watch it on the four uh, like a four three aspect ratio on a tube TV from friggin' nineteen ninety four, then it doesn't look as bad as it does because the some of that stuff is just hidden behind the fact that it's so low res. Yeah. Like yeah, I, I definitely I want to go back and get the the Star Wars uh, VHS tapes just just to have that stuff. You know, like I don't know. Yeah, it's a party. Maybe have a family movie night and just. Put the put the nineteen inch tube television, you know, right below my sixty five inch OLED, and uh, you know, pop some popcorn and and freaking watch uh, you know Empire Strikes Back on VHS. Like, so. I'm gonna pop into to, to very my anime moment. I don't think we've had these in one of these in a while, but uh, there's a thing that like <clears throat> people do online, and they like take. Specifically, they'll take anime clips and they'll make them like 400, four, uh, they'll make them 4K, like 60 frames per second. And like, he's like, oh man, this looks so cool. And it looks terrible because animators animate at like 30 frames or sometimes even like 24 frames per second. Yeah, I, was, so I if, thought it was 24. Yeah. So if you're. If you're trying to take something that's at 24 frames per second and put it up to 60 frames per second, you're basically extrapolating and, like, making up, like, 36 frames in between each frame. And yeah, it's like... That's what happened with the the, uh, the Hobbit trilogy, dude. Yeah. Um, it It's unnatural. Yeah, it looks... If you're actually... If you're actually, like, looking at it as a person who like enjoys animation, it looks terrible. It's like all of these like weird wonky extra frames in between that like jiggle all the physics up. It's like this looks terrible. Why are you doing this? And yeah, like, not the jiggle physics you want. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah. You gotta so, respect the jiggle physics. So I do I <laughs> I have an I have an anime minute that I gotta share real quick. <clears throat> So, um, there's two new animes that I, that I, me and Andrea are both watching, which is rare. <clears throat> One of them is, uh, solo leveling and solo leveling is just like, it's basically like, what if for some reason I was the only person in an RPG, but like. It's got good roots. It's very dark. It's like... <clears throat> the world's kind of mysterious to begin with. Then the main character gets his powers. And like... It's getting a little bit more... Everything's getting a little bit more like... Lost in the fog. So I'm kind of... Re I'm really enjoying it. But the other one... <clears throat> is called Delicious in Dungeon. Sorry, one more cough. <coughs> So, Delicious in Dungeon is these three adventurers, like classic adventurers. We got a, a wizard, we got a, a, like a fighter warrior, and like a thief, rogue. <clears throat> They're exploring this like big huge dungeon, and they run into a dwarf who is a barbarian and a chef. And every episode is just about them finding a way to eat whatever monster they run into in the dungeon. <laughs> and, like, so it starts out, and it's, like, the first thing they run into is, like, Final Fantasy-style slimes. <clears throat> and they're, like, how are we going to eat this? It's just a bunch of jelly. And he's, like, and then the chef dude's, like, well, most of its body is just a bunch of jelly, but in order for it to move around and actually, you know, have thoughts and consciousness, there's a 
bit inside the jelly you gotta find that's actually the brain and the organs, and then that part is the part that you eat. And, like, they, like, go through and, like, chefly cut up all of it and, like, put it up in a stew with, like, veggies and stuff they find in the freaking dungeon, and then, like, it turns into, like, like slime jelly stew and then they like eat it and like the whole the, like it's so wholesome and adorable <clears throat> and like the chef guy is like the chef character is this like like wise old dude but like he just loves to eat monsters and like every episode of it is like the cutest thing I've seen in a long time and I'm really enjoying it <laughs> Where can one find this this show? That one is on Netflix. And it is called Delicious in Dungeon. And it is adorable. Mm. <clears throat> I will probably have to subscribe to Netflix soon. And I will watch that. So um, the, so WWE you... is going to Netflix. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, they're taking Monday Night Raw off of the USA Network and off of cable entirely. And putting it on Netflix in 2025. Dude, Netflix is making some moves because you know what? El- what other yeah. show that they just bought and like it got exclusive rights to? Freaking what? One Piece. <clears throat> oh really? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> is, Netflix... is that going to come off of uh, Crunchyroll? Or, yeah, it's going to be off Crunchyroll. It's going to be off everything except for Netflix. Wow. Are they going to put all like fifteen thousand episodes on it? Now, uh, hold on, hold on. Not only is Netflix getting exclusive access to the current run of One Piece, Netflix is doing a One Piece reboot, which is going to be a Netflix exclusive retelling of One Piece. And they have season two of the live show coming out soon. So wait, 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 wait. So. One Piece, like it, like the original run of One Piece, is that gonna go? Like, there's, I mean, there's what, there's over a thousand something episodes. Are those all going to Netflix? Yes. Okay. Subbed and Drake dubbed. and I started watching that on Hulu, and they, I mean, they didn't have Hulu didn't have as much, um, as I want. I mean, dude, we're never gonna finish it. But <laughs> we like, we like. Let's be honest, you know what I mean. I'm not watching all that shit. Uh, but we liked what we watched of it. Um, if Netflix gets it, I may you know, end up finishing it you know, by the time I'm 108 years old. <laughs> yeah. You know. It's literally... So what's literally happening right now is the Netflix sub... <clears throat> Netflix dubbed version is like 350 episodes into One Piece. The sub version is like 600 episodes into One Piece. Then they have, like, the current episodes also running. So, like, there's, like, a big gap in the middle where they just... they The episodes haven't caught up yet. And then, like I said, there's the live action that came out last year. Um, a new season of that is due, I think, at the end of this year or the beginning of next year. And then they're also doing a, a complete retelling of the entire story of One Piece in a new se- a new show that's coming out s- exclusively for Netflix. You already stressed me out. <laughs> so, I can't do it. I uh, there are no details about this new retelling of One Piece besides that it's happening, but I can't imagine that they plan on making the retelling as long as the original. So, I don't know, maybe maybe that's a a better bet to like wait for that retelling to come out and watch that. Dude, if they can do a Kai version of it, like you know, Dragon Ball Z Kai, um, yeah, that was. Yeah, I still think Kai was maybe a little bit long, but um, it was it was a solid watch. You know, they, they I cut could, out some of the the fun stuff, but I could definitely see that that's that being what this new version is. But I mean, even if you do a Kai version of freaking. One Piece, it's still going to be like 500 episodes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, a, that's a lot. But, I, dude, I've, I haven't had Netflix um, since probably season two of Stranger Things. 
And I don't remember when that came out. Man, it's been a while. I, I'm not like like I'm I'm one of those, those people. Kids, those things are like 34 years old now. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Finn Wolfhart can definitely drink at this point. <laughs> <clears throat> are you I, getting paid though? I like Finn Wolfhart has like five more shows, five more movies to be in before he is like like officially adopted as like a millennial like he's got a couple more shows before he's gonna be like people are gonna be like you're basically a millennial millennial you you've you're in the remake of all millennial stuff so i mean even well, he's a-okay in my book even he's stranger things it. even the stranger things character that he plays was is technically a millennial by the story's time of events <laughs> <clears throat> I would welcome him into our age group. You know, no problem. So, no. <clears throat> so that is um, as far as as far as I'm concerned. I cannot um, believe that like someone was like, "What if we make more One Piece?" Like, there's already yeah, we... almost 1,100 episodes. Someone was like, "What if we make?" more what if we make a second you know, series that runs parallel to the original series that tells the same story over again I don't know how someone was I mean I do because One Piece basically prints money but like I don't understand how someone was like don't you think you've stressed these people enough there's an alternate universe where Johnny Bravo got 1100 episodes and he got his own Netflix, t- uh, you know, live action TV spinoff, you know, starring Chris Pratt. And... <laughs> do you remember when the the big thing was that they were going to do a, a live action Johnny Bravo was going to was going to star The Rock? Do you remember that? Oh, dude, vaguely. Like that's <laughs> that's opening and unlocking doors in my brain. <laughs> I, I, I completely, dude. After have you have you seen the Barbie movie yet? I have not. Okay. I I know this is like Ken in that movie is basically just Johnny Bravo, kind <laughs> of. Like I just get Ryan Gosling. Like throw give that my give that boy some big old hair and a and a black t shirt. Um Johnny Bravo is the hero that we need, <laughs> but not the hero that we deserve. I think it's but I don't even... I think I think he's not the hero that we need, but he's the hero that we need. Really? Deserve. Yes. Like, dude, Johnny Bravo, can you imagine what Johnny Bravo would look like in today's climate? <laughs> like in our, just the the way our society is, just like the the le- like the left would be so pissed off and I like I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to fight against that one. I don't think so. I, you think I, so? I think Johnny Bravo would perfectly fit into the the himbo role perfectly because he is just a big dumb hot guy. Well, okay, so and I I actually I disagree with myself on that. Um, I I do think that the left would be pissed off, especially if they don't like if they don't get it. But I th- like I don't know. I think Johnny Bravo is a, a smarter show than what people remember it as um he never like he was a he was sexist and he was gross and all this other stuff um he never won yes johnny bravo is the heel of johnny bravo he he never ever <clears throat> ever 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 won an episode like never he never succeeded um the closest he ever got with that was maybe the scooby-doo episode yeah and he succeeded more with, uh, you know, Shaggy and Scooby than he did with Velma and, and Daphne. That was a smart episode too, man. What a what a good episode. Applecore, <laughs> Baltimore. Who's your friend? Me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man, we're just we're just like planting the millennial flag and just letting it fly Dude. right now. And we're so old. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I <clears throat> the thing that I guess like you said, the thing about Johnny Bravo was he he never won. And like the second thing that was always about Johnny that was about Johnny Bravo was there were two rules to Johnny Bravo. The two rules were Johnny Bravo never wins. Johnny Bravo is a wuss. And only in one occasion was he not a wuss. And that was when you mess with his mama. Then he was the toughest motherfucker in that show. And you, like, if you mess with Johnny Bravo's mom, you back up. Because he, the, the only time he ever gets tough in that show is when you're messing with his mom. That's true. That is true. Like, we need John Bravo back. <laughs> it's just like, like, I feel like there are so many conversations that are, like, so many of the stuff, the stuff that we enjoyed as millennials, like, has this message that is the leftist message that everyone wants it to be, but people miss it. Miss the the forest for the trees, as they say. Like, yeah. Like, a good example is Fight Club. There are people who like love Fight Club and think like, oh, Tyler Durden is like such a badass. He's an example of how men should be. Like, if you watch Fight Club, Tyler Durden is the bad guy. Yeah, he's the bad guy. It's not. It's not hidden. It's not. Like it's not a like a like some like mind game that they play. I mean, it kind of is because it's Fight Club. But like, it is very obvious that Tyler is the bad guy if you actually watch the movie. Like, yeah, I, that's people try to misinterpret things just for the sake of misinterpreting them, though. Yeah, like like what I my mean, point that's is. That's what they want to. My point is like the the well, the writer because it's based off a book, but like the directors wrote and directed the movie. So that even if, I don't know, even if you walk in halfway through and then barely watch, the last scene in the movie is literally them him fighting Tyler and Tyler's not even there. Like, what? Like, it ends with him disregarding everything Tyler made. Like, it, the whole movie is about how he is being brainwashed until he figures it out at the end. And then he releases himself from brainwash by killing Tyler. Like, and then like, people are like, oh man, Tyler Durden, what a great, what, oh man, Fight Club. It's like, the whole movie is about how this is all bad. Yeah. How this all Extremism is bad. And all that yes. And how it gets out, got out of control and went to a place that he never wanted it to go to and you know, just because this charismatic leader is pushing everyone in this direction doesn't mean that he's right. Like, the whole movie is that. And, then, like, if you actually watch it, it's pretty easy to pick up on. But, like, people just, like, this is, sorry, I'm, like, that Fight Club thing really irritates me. But, like, my point is, I hear you. my point is, there's so many things that I feel like people today <clears throat> talk about, like, these really bad millennial things that we were into that, like, we thought we're awesome, and they're like, yeah, but Tyler's a bad person. I'm like, yes, movies have to have bad people in them. That's what makes the conflict. Tyler's the bad guy. Like, I'm sorry, all of you love stricken comic fans who really just want your, yourself a Harley Quinn to ride or die for you, but the Joker is the bad guy. He's the bad guy. He's the bad guy yeah. in their relationship. There is no, I mean, like, I'm never going to say no because there, every comic writer in the world writes their different versions of Joker no, and Harley differently. No. But, like, the general consensus is the Joker is very abusive to Harley. There's no redeemable qualities about the Joker. None. Like, And that's the point. Yes, that is the point. Like, I, people are like, oh, man, but, you know, I want me, I want me a relationship like <clears throat> the Joker and Harley. It's like. No, because the Joker is an abusive, manipulative freak, and he destroys Harley for comic after comic after comic until she finally gets away from him. Yep. Joker sucks. <coughs> <coughs> 
So, like, my point is, there, it's perfectly acceptable to write bad people in stories, and those stories can still have good meanings and good themes and values. Yeah. <clears throat> like, this is one that I had with <clears throat> one of my friends, <clears throat> one of my old friends. I, I love The Great Gatsby. I think it's a great book. It's one of my favorite books of all time. And he's like, I hate it. I'm like, why? And he's like, because I didn't like any of the characters. I'm like, you're not supposed to. It's like, well, even the, the narrator character, even the narrator character doesn't actually stand up for anybody or stand up for justice or the truth or anything. He's just, he just shows up and like, he's just around while these people do all these bad things. I'm like, yes, that's what he's supposed to do. He's not supposed to be a good person either. None of these people are good people. <clears throat> the entirety of The Great Gatsby is a book that shows how <clears throat> audacious and decadent and destructive and horrible the 1920s were. That's the entire premise of the book. So none of the characters are in, in the book are good because they're all from the 1920s and they're all living this decadent, horrible lifestyle. That's the point. And he's like, well, how am I supposed to root for this guy? I'm like, you're not supposed to root for any of them. They're all bad. Like, Daisy Buchanan is just, is just some rich chick who just flutters from relationship to relationship because she has so much money it doesn't matter. Freaking Gatsby is this gangster who they basically allude to selling weapons and drugs to, like, build this empire to chase after this one girl just because it's something for him to do. <clears throat> and then Tom Buchanan is some giant asshole who's equally rich and equally doesn't care what he does to anyone around him. And then the main character is just like the rich, the, the kind of rich tag along who just follows everyone around and, you know, like, Wants to be part of their world, but doesn't have any money or influence to do it. And he just does it because he's related to Daisy. Like, they're they're all bad. All bad guys. All of them. And nobody is happy at the end. <clears throat> Tom's wife cheats on him. Daisy basically kills a lady. <clears throat> Gatsby gets shot by that lady's husband. That lady, I think she ends up dying. She gets hit by a car. And then, like, nobody's happy at the end. And that's the point. There's my book report on The Great Gatsby. Hashtag Game Dads. <laughs> Hashtag Game Dads. They make a Great Gatsby game, I'd play the crap out of that. <laughs> well, you want to wrap it up? Yeah, okay. Um... <clears throat> Um, I, I basically done a, done a what I'm playing just based off of the conversations that we've been having. But um, what I'm playing is Bloodborne, which is yeah I'm enjoying and really getting into. Um, Tales of Arise, I'm playing through the game again so I can play the DLC. And I kind of started Pokemon Sword, but like not really. Because uh, once I hit... Once I started playing it, I was like, okay, I'm not going to get any of these games done if I am playing three separate games at the same time. It's just not going to happen. So I was like, yeah, you got to focus one at a time. <clears throat> I'm going to put this down. <clears throat> and how about you, man? Have you said all of yours or is there anything else you're playing? You're, are you, say, let's say you played since the last time we talked. Oh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I am kind of playing stuff. I've been bouncing around, um, you know, I'm, I'm still playing KOTOR. Um, I'm loving that. I just got off of Terrace. I'm about seven hours in, seven and a half hours in. i um, about to get my lightsaber, so I'm pretty stoked about that. I've never played a light side character before. Ooh. Um, I've, th that's the only game I've ever actually been a bad guy in. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to tell you what, dude, the light side's not fun. So it's, it's definitely, it's harder to be a, it's harder to be a good guy in that game than it is a bad guy, uh, especially if you know the ending of that game. I do not. Um, 
I did start Animusha Warlords. Animusha, um, wow. I'm, I've never played Animusha. That which that feels way left field. Animusha. Yeah, I'm kind of hitting you with some weird ones. Um, <laughs> I. I'm, I'm, I've, I've been loving it up until the. I don't know how much you know Animusha, but no, uh, there's a. Lot, but... There is a, like it's it's Samurai Resident Evil. It's it's great, um, until you get to, there's a there's a pretty uh, pretty crazy puzzle in the middle of it that uh, if you are not paying attention will just completely end you. Um. I don't really have a whole lot more to say about it, but uh, it, it's definitely an interesting game. And then, like, randomly, dude, today st- I started, I started um, Shadow of Mordor. Ooh. Is that the new one that I've just came played. out? Or is that one of the older ones? No, it's like 10 years old now. Um, Shadow of Mordor. Which one's that? that? Yeah. Uh, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. Is that the one with the, the, the Nemesis system? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that the first one or the second one? First one. Okay. I have both. Me and Andrea played the crap out of both of those games. <clears throat> I've never beat it. Um, I bought it when it came out, so I've this is my copy that I bought in whenever it came out, 2014, 2015, yeah. something like that. Um, that's, that's, a, that's pretty old. That's why my brain was like, is he talking about the new one that just dropped? Like, why? But you did say you were going back, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have anything else better to do right now. Um, I've been working a lot, so work's been pretty crazy. Um, we're hopefully going to be fully staffed by, like, May. Um, so I got a little bit of, of time to be stressed. So, um, yeah, I'm just kind of I'm trying to play where, when I can, where I can and stuff. So I've been getting up. I get up at, like, 5 o'clock in the morning. I play video games. Um, it's the only time I have to play. That's so good. I've been working on the weekends too, man. Like taking my surface home with me, and yeah, I feel you, man. Yeah. It's work-life balance, dude. Like it's important. Like it's very important. And um, the last the last few months have been kind of kind of stressful. So it's been it's been good to like unwind with some with some good games and um. Yeah, I, that's really all I got, dude. Um, mostly just like the like the old Republic here, and um, we watched that Xbox game direct or whatever it was uh-huh. last week, or maybe or maybe it was the week before that, dude. That new Indiana Jones game, uh, Indiana Jones game, looks sick. Like just everything that I want. Again, as I will always say. I I don't mean the industry itself because the industry side of it is not in a state that I would ever wish on any anybody to have to deal with, but just the pre like the the level of like weird specific games that have been coming out recently. I'm so excited! Like freaking like you yeah. can play, you can play RoboCop and Indiana Jones. Like what? I love it! I love Ooh. it. The last like the last couple of Star Wars games have been great too, like the the Jedi um, Jedi Survivor uh-huh. and uh, Fallen Order. Freaking, um, it's just you can you can you can play Indiana Jones, you can play RoboCop, you can play Star Wars, and you can be Nicolas Cage in freaking Dead by Daylight. What is happening? Yeah. Games right now. It's just like how 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 are so many people getting laid off? While games are so awesome right now, like I, I just played a dope ass Pinocchio game. Yeah, freaking dope ass Pinocchio. What like dope ass Pinocchio? <clears throat> uh, on that note, we got st- positive ones. Positive. All right, my positive is a little is a little interesting because over the last like two or three weeks. I have been through some dramatic circumstances. So, <clears throat> I got sick. Had another stomach thing. Went to the emergency room. Came back from the oh, emergency dude. room. Wasn't fun. But, came back from the emergency room. 
and then I had this thing going on where I was like I had like pain in my chest. So I had a lot of time to freak out about that. I went to the doctor. They said everything's fine, but it was still happening. Then I went to the gym and worked on my chest. And I realized the pain in my chest that I was experiencing was muscle soreness. My pecs were sore. That was making my chest hurt. I thought it was so much more than that. For two weeks I was losing it. But it's pec soreness. So my my positive is that I have pec soreness and not anything else. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, dude. I love that so much. I I hate that you're sick, dude. I, I, I absolutely hate that. I've been dealing with my own stuff last two days, but I'm glad you got packs, bro. <laughs> just, just, I like, I'm not kidding you. I was freaking out for like two weeks, and then I went to the gym and worked out, and I was like, oh "My God, that is my freaking pecs. My pecs are sore. I'm not oh my dying. God. My pecs are sore. Oh my God!" And like, mm. I had to tell Andrea. <laughs> And she had to laugh in my face about it. And I was like, I deserve this. This is this is one hell of an episode. <laughs> um, my positive is not nearly as good as yours. I, I guarantee that. Um, the Royal Rumble was last night. And I know I talked about wrestling a little bit earlier. But this is my favorite time of year to be a wrestling fan. Um, it's They call it the road to WrestleMania. But... It always it starts with the Rumble and it goes to it goes to WrestleMania and uh, and uh, so Rumble starts in January and then WrestleMania is in usually late March or early April. So, but that period of time is just ah, oh, dude, it's so good. So, yeah, that's my positive. We're on the road to WrestleMania. No, I I have I have I haven't said this, but. I I want this to be known to all. This is a wrestling safe space. I am not a huge wrestling fan, but I would never knock anyone who is because I understand why I just, I don't have room for another thing in my brain or I would be a wrestling fan. But like, this is a safe space for talking about wrestling. So if you got some wrestling issues in your, and you get upset and you hear about wrestling, then you might want to tune into another podcast because this is a wrestling safe space. If my man Brett oh, yeah. wants to come here and talk about wrestling for an hour. I will sit here and we will talk about wrestling for an hour. I don't. Fuck. Oh yeah. <clears throat> you come at me with with all your all your thoughts and opinions and all that stuff, and I'll tell you why you're wrong. So, actually, that's not true. I won't do that. But yeah, I uh, yeah. Bring them on, AEW, WWE, TNA. WCW, ECW, uh, you know, I was trying to think of some other funny acronyms, but I couldn't think of it. Uh, TNA is funny enough. Yeah, yeah. That's... It's a real place. It's <clears throat> it's not just tits and ass, you know. It's a uh, total nonstop action. That's real. I, <laughs> I I put it on the list. I want I want me a wrestling episode. I now that I've said it, I want it to happen. Put it on the list. Do you? <clears throat> Absolutely. Do you? <clears throat> All right. Listen to me. I won't, we... Listen to me. Listen to me. I know when we were kids, there was we had these wrestling versus anime conversations. But I have never not liked wrestling. I just don't have the brain space for it. It's like so. It's like it's like another prof- It's like a sport. It's like it's like me saving my brain for space for football. I just I don't not like football. I just don't have the brain space for it. All right, I, I got the the title of the episode. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and we can end it after this if you want to. The title of the episode is "Wrestling Is Anime." <laughs> I I completely agree. I completely agree because. Yep. If if you, I completely agree, completely agree, and I am totally like I said, totally down 
for a wrestling episode because I I still have some favorite memories from watching wrestling and some favorite wrestlers and some favorite stories that I've heard of wrestlers. I mean, literally, we were on this podcast, you're the wrestling fan, and I told a giant story about a wrestler for some reason randomly just because it inspires the hell out of me. I love those guys. Yeah. Yep. Oh, dude, I'm totally down for it. Totally okay. down for it. We'll put it on the list, and then we'll do a wrestling episode at some point. I'll have to dust off my blog of uh, comparing the, the, the 2011 wrestling scene to Dragon Ball V. <laughs> I, I, I would not only... Okay, here's the, the rules. If, if you can make that comparison, and you can make it tight and real, I will... I'll animate the whole thing. I'll sit down really? and I'll make ten minutes of straight animation. Us, comp- you comparing wrestlers to Dragon Ball Z characters. I'll do it. I'll clear my whole okay, goddamn he- schedule for it. Well, he- here's a little bit of a hint. It's specifically 2011. Okay. okay. The first one's easy. John Cena's Goku. Okay. I. All right. Say, save save it. Save- is- Save it for big time. Save it for the big time. I gotta say, I have to say the second one because okay. that one's that's a that's a dead giveaway. DM Punk is Vegeta. <laughs> I'm I'm ready. I oh, will... dude, I got more. I got more, but I'll save it. <laughs> Okie doke. That is this is our podcast time. Love you guys out Thank there. Thank you all in Game Dad Game Dad's land. And we'll see you on the next one. Love you guys. Wimmy Wham Wham Wazzle.